Hey, what's up, Data Fam? This is Sean Miller, Hipster Viz Ninja, coming at you, and we've got an excellent episode this week with six, count them, six different Viz of the Day winners to go over with you. We've got so many cool Viz elements that you can start to learn about and implement into your Viz's. We've got forecasting, dot plots, custom map box maps, Sankeys, circular and regular, density heat maps, we've got custom map layers, we've got so much stuff going on. I can't wait to show you. Like I said, we've got a lot to cover, so let's go. All right, so this first one that we're gonna take a look at is by Idris, and it is, I believe it was a Makeover Monday submission. What we are looking at is the energy, energy transition in European countries over a 20 year trend, 2000 to 2020. What I really like about this viz is the use of simple colors. We're he's using three colors here, green, white, and black. I think it's really smart, green, renewable energy, um, and then you've got black and white because it's a black or white issue, either you're doing it or you're not. I think that's a really smart idea and it's a really great way to set the say set the stage and subliminally tell a story set the stage for you for the users so really nice job on the colors i really like this what we see first here is a uh is the 20 year trend line uh and then what idris has done is added uh a forecast which is really cool. I've got a link. Uh, if you've never used forecasting in Tableau, it's an out of the box functionality. I've got a link down in the description below if you wanna learn how to do a little bit more with forecasting in Tableau. Very, very cool stuff. And there's some ways that you can kind of manipulate the forecast to uh, you know, take into consideration things like seasonality and those types of things. So really nice job. I think this is really nice. It shows uh, what things might look like if things continue on this trend, which is what forecasting is all about. As we, scroll, as we scroll down here, I really like this trellis chart that shows all of the European countries in this data set, and it shows their percentage of renewable to fossil fuel consumption percentages. Uh, the first thing, he's got it sorted alphabetically, which I think is good because you can quickly, the thing about sorting, you have lots of different options, right? You can sort by, you can sort alphabetically, you can sort by a measure. I think one of the really good things that alphabetically sorting does is if somebody were to come into this dashboard and say, I want to know what the fossil fuel consumption is for any country, they can just look, scan the list, and then find the country that they're interested in and then use that to compare, which is really nice. Some other people uh, might want to come in here and see who has the largest share of fossil fuels or who has the highest share of renewables. It's a little bit harder to do that in this view because he's, uh, he's statically sorted this. Uh, so... Uh, but there is there are options that you can uh, add parameter buttons or radio buttons to change the sort if you wanted to. But uh, I think having it defaulted to alphabetically is really nice. Uh, and then also up in the upper left here, he's got uh, or in the upper right, excuse me, he's got a, a, a year filter. So you can quickly filter to a or select a specific year to see how that is is going. I think. Again, when we talk about that color, like I talked about at the top, it's a black and white issue. Well, the really good thing about the black and white colors is that it really pops out, right? Immediately there are things you can, without needing to scan uh, and look at the actual numbers, you can quickly see which ones stand out, right? You can quickly see that uh, Cyprus, uh, for example, is really still, a, still heavily using fossil fuels. Uh, additionally, you can see that Romania is using, uh, they're, they're about equal, fossil fuels and 
renewables. And then you've got Sweden, which is just killing it. Um, and when it comes to renewable energy, um, which is really nice. So uh, that is something that is very encouraging and it's something that, you know, uh, they've, they've definitely put in a lot of uh, time and effort and resources and they made a concerted effort to uh, to go green, uh, to go to renewable energies. So, having having said talked about Sweden, he further breaks out Sweden, gives it a uh, specific call out here, down in the bottom section, where he talks about talks about Sweden has a nice call out box right in the center. We see that uh, we see that pie graph we see that that pie graph again. And then what's also really interesting about this chart is, and this data is they provide the actual sources of energy. And you can see that the majority of Sweden, uh, the majority of Sweden's energy is coming from hydroelectricity, which is really cool. So you can see the breakdown, the percent of total, and you can see coal and hard coal and gas, which are the three um, fossil fuels you can see that they're making up a very, very small percentage, um, just about only 1%, so, which is really cool. You know, perhaps maybe if, if I were, uh, if I were looking for, if I would, if I were to offer feedback, uh, I would perhaps color the different bars by their fossil, by their fuel type. So, uh, by fossil fuels or by renewables, that might be interesting as well. And then adding in additional perhaps adding in additional interactivity so that I could click on Slovenia and I could see what their breakdown is. Those critiques are simple suggestions. They do not make or break. Uh, they do not make or break this. This is an exceptional entry and an exceptional Viz of the Day winner as it is. Very nice. Love the colors. Love the forecasting. Nice panel chart right here and a final call out down at the bottom. So really nice job. Very well deserving. Congrats, Idris. So this next dashboard that we're going to take a look at is from Eve Thomas, and it comes from, she is one of the collaborators, creators of the new diversity in data initiative. And so what we are looking at here is a history of notable, of notable black achievements between 1738 and 2021. And chronicling, again, a series of firsts uh, which is really nice. And then down here, she's got it broken out by by category. And each dot is a notable uh, black achievement. And the as you can see here in her title um, intro here, <clears throat> you can see that all of the black dots are going to be uh, men and all of the white dots are going to be, be uh, women first, uh, which is really nice. And then you can just scroll down and look you know at each one you know depending on whichever one you wanted to look at and so as you scroll down you can just see the different people uh the different african-american folks who have done particular firsts which is really nice and then she has sorted this really nicely uh to have this kind of descend, ascending, I should say, by category. And then so what that ended up with, just because of the size of the data, she ended up with this really long dashboard uh, and she had this giant space that she needed to fill up with something. Uh, and what she chose to do was uh, to make this really, really nice collage of these different uh, notable historic black figures that are featured in this data set. And so it kind of fills up, it does a really nice job of, uh, you know, kind of filling in that, uh, filling in that space. So using negative space, uh, using images uh, to fill up the, uh, the negative space here, I think works really, really well. Not a lot, whole lot not a whole lot of interactivity here. Just kind of, uh, you kind of search and this is something to kind of take into consideration, think about. Um, and really kind of appreciate all of the uh, all of the great ach achievements by African Americans, uh, which is really nice. So it, it, these the dots are sorted uh, by year ascending. So 
the dots up at the top are, happened earlier. Uh, it happened a long, long time ago. And as you get as you scroll down, you can see more recent achievements. So really nice job. Congratulations, Eve. Yeah, go check this one out. All right, now this next one is for all of you wine drinkers out there. Uh, this dashboard was created by Kimley Scott, and we are looking at the famous Mornington Peninsula uh, of Australia and their incredible wine region there. So the first thing that you notice, the first thing that jumps off at you is, is obviously the map. You can probably recognize that this is not a out of the box map. It's actually a custom map box map. I've got a link down in the description below if you want to uh, read up a little bit on how to go about making your own custom map box uh, background maps that you can then bring into Tableau. Uh, you can change the background map to a custom one, which is really nice. So go check that out. And what I really like what Kimley has done is she's, again, it comes up, it comes up so much, but, but color really does add so much to a dashboard, to a viz, right? We've got this really nice kind of, uh, kind of pink fuchsia maroon color with this, uh, really light, uh, nice green color that also you know, it's in the uh, it's in it's in the title here, but it's also covered. Uh, you know, it's also that same green color is also used to show the topography uh, within the region. So I think that's that's just a really nice a really nice touch. But uh, something to some of the things to kind of keep in mind here is each one of these is each one of these triangles here is a is a winery. And uh, it talks about, you know, it has the name of the vineyard, the region that it's in, and and then it, what's really cool, and I didn't know this until I started playing around with this, but if you click on a, if you click on, and then you hover on this link, it's clickable, which. I didn't think was possible. I don't know when that was introduced in, in Tableau functionality, uh, the ability to embed clickable links, which is really nice. Uh, the only way that I've known how to do it is to create a URL action and then use that as a, uh, as a menu action that you would then click on. It looks like a hyperlink, but when I downloaded this to look at it, I actually saw that it's, it is just the link. Um, and there's no actions whatsoever. It's just, you click, you click on the tooltip. So you're able to hover and then you go into the tooltip and you can click on that link and it will take you right to the website, which is, which is really cool. So, uh, great find. I don't know if you, uh, if you stumbled upon that Kimley or if it was something that, uh, you knew about and you wanted to highlight that feature, but that's, that is an awesome feature. So way to go on that. I really like that. And then the other thing that I really like about this is you can see how the her text here, her main text kind of follows the coastline of Australia, of the peninsula. And what's interesting about this, and I can't imagine how much time this took, this is a, this is all a custom text box in Tableau. And so the, the text box is actually, you know, it's actually this large. This, this entire text box is, is, is pretty large. But then she's just added extra spaces at the end of each line to match up to this kind of linear uh, angle here, which, again, lots of trial and error, I'm sure, and uh, trying to get things to line up just right. I know that wrapping text around images in, in Tableau is... Uh, is, is not easy and um, but I, the, the end result you put in the hard work you put in the you put in the time and the effort and the end result is really nice so uh, I really like how you did that very editorial uh, which is nice uh, so so way to go on that and then a custom uh, a custom image up here that shows uh, to, to bring in some uh, some nice custom fonts uh, to make sure that it really kind of tells that story and kind of puts, kind of puts that, 
that spin on uh, the design, which is really nice. So uh, the if I were to offer a uh, if I were to offer some feedback, uh, I would just kind of watch the contrast of everything. Uh, everything kind of starts to blend together. So uh, thinking about accessibility, uh, things like that, just just raise the contrast uh, just a little bit. But again. For the majority of users, uh, this is going to be a really nice. This is going to be a really nice dashboard to look at. It is very pleasing to look at. It, it's not harsh. You know, I'm I'm kind of contradicting myself, but just something to keep in mind. Check out the description below if you want to start creating your own custom uh, map box background maps uh, for your uh, for your Tableau visualizations. So, nice job, Kimley. So this next dashboard that we're going to take a look at is by Wendy, and we are looking at uh, 60 years of the Paralympic Games. What I really like about this is uh, it shows just how much the Paralympic Games have, has grown uh, in several years. You can see in this map right up here how many countries have participated in and or have hosted. And then below that we have this uh, this nice Sankey chart that is showing the different sports or events that took place and which years, and the lines connecting them show which years uh, those sports were played in. So one of the things that I really like about what Wendy has, has done here is she has this gray bar coming down here that separates winter from summer games but it also acts as a timeline uh, and so each triangle on here is a different Olympic game and if you click on any of the triangles you can see it draws the lines and connects to see which sports were played at those at that specific uh, Paralympic Games, so which is really nice. So you can see, you know, real quick, you know, right around '94 is when they started alternating every two years, as opposed to previously they happened in the same year. Um, but now we get Paralympic Games uh, every two years, and then not only that, which is really cool, is you can see future uh, Paralympic Games, and you can again see which sports which events will be played at those and where and then down below that uh wendy went another she went in another layer deeper and she started to look at uh male and female uh, participation you can see real quick that uh the darker the color are the males for both and the lighter colors are for females as you can see overall there is a positive trend going upwards uh, and you can see not only that in total participation uh, but also in female presentation and uh, female representation at the summer games it's a little hard to tell because of the synchronized axis it's a little hard to tell if the women are going up uh, in the winter games as well but it looks like they might be and then what's really interesting here is you see she has these uh, you see that she has these annotations for the change over time. And originally I thought these were just regular, these lines down here were just the regular annotation lines. But in fact, they're marks, which is really an interesting way to kind of, uh, kind of an interesting way to do that. So this is actually a dual axis chart where she's added in these custom values for these years so that it connects up to the annotation, which I think is really nice. So um, if you're wanting to kind of do some cool stuff with your annotations, uh, definitely check out the description below. I've got a, uh, I've got a little introduction to annotations and how you can use them in your dashboards to call out specific information like uh, Wendy has done here. But uh, that's the first time that I've seen anybody use a mark to draw the line connecting that. So, uh, which is which is a really creative uh, and um, interesting technique. So 
you know, I think what it, what it does nicely is it exactly, um, it puts the line directly in the middle of your, of your header. Uh, otherwise you'd have to eyeball it and hopefully get close. But, uh, you know, if you're a pixel perfectionist, then you can just use this and you can just use Wendy's technique here and have your annotations put exactly where you want them. So, and this has other, this has other techniques, right? You can actually, you could probably even, um, you know, do other really cool things with annotations. So definitely check that out. And then lastly, uh, she's got a really nice call out here for, uh, if you want more details about everything, just, uh, go to this website and, and do that. She entered this into last month's Iron Quest, which is run by uh, Sarah Bartlett, and the topic was passion projects. So really cool stuff from Wendy. Uh, where are all my uh, vampire slayers at? Check this one out. So Mark created this, and looking at the popular television series uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and created this really really artistic and interesting circular Sankey. You know, we saw one last week. We saw another one this week here. Uh, they're really kind of, they're really kind of popular right now. Uh, we tend to see that a little bit in the community uh, when a new chart type or not a new chart type, but a, an interesting eye catching chart type gets some traction. Then it's kind of a, who can do it? Um, how many different ways can we put this together? Can we use this? So, uh, which is really nice. I really like it. So this, so the inner ring is the killer. The outer ring is the victim colored by the category of, uh, type of person. And then he's got the Sankey that is connecting who killed who. So if you were to, uh, you know, if you were to click on the slayers, you can see really quick, that you know they killed uh you know 15 15 humans 181 vampires we've got not they killed nine undead those types of things so it's really cool so you can kind of do this and then so that kind of takes up the left hand portion of this uh, this circle. The right hand side is a breakdown by show, which is a really nice, interesting. So you kind of get the uh, aggregate and the detail on the left and right side, which is really nice. So you've also got um, you've also got the ability to do that. And so each outer, so you can see if you kind of if we kind of zoom in a little bit. If we zoom in, you can see that we have this black kind of uh, darker gray border outline. That is an actual season. And then these smaller ones are actually individual episodes of that season. And then each dot is a uh, each dot is a death. And then you can see all that. Uh, the people, the ones up top are the good people. And the ones inside the ring are evil. So kind of this good versus evil type of, uh, type of thing that all of course, and then over here, you've got all of the different types. So if you really want to see, you know, let's, let's, let's take a gander at the vampires. You can click on vampire and it'll show you all of the different, uh, vampires right here. And you can even go one step further click on a particular vampire and it will show you just that. Yeah. So if you, if you look closely, it's really hard to tell because the dots are so small. But when I click on a particular vampire, you can see dots that appear, right? So you can see dots that appear as I click, which is really cool. So, and then you can just click off of this. And another one he's got down here is he's got this reset button. So if you just want to go right back to the beginning, you can click that. Clears all your selections and you're back to square one. So this is really nice. But I really like what he's done here to 
add in this how to use, how to read, how to explore this dashboard. He talks about what each particular segment is, uh, how to read it, and then he talks about the icons down below. So this is really helpful to kind of orient yourself on how to do it, uh, how to read this chart, how to use it. So really nice job, Mark. I really liked it. If you want to learn more about circular Sankey diagrams, be sure to check out the description below. I've got a link to a blog post that shows you how you can do that. Nice job, Mark. All right, so the last dashboard that we're going to take a look at is by Kisley Benedict. You can follow him on Twitter at Kisley, K-I-Z-L-E-Y. And it is a really, really nice dashboard. Basically, he needed to, he was moving and he wanted to move in Bangalore. And he, so he started scraping data and researching, doing a lot of research and kind of collected all that data and created this really, really beautiful dashboard, taking a look at, um, looking, taking a look at residential hotspots. And so what this is really, again, from the earlier video, what we've got going on is a custom, uh, a custom map background. So you can kind of tell first thing that kind of caught my eye were these really interesting kind of hashed areas here. Uh, and that is not something that you can do in Tableau right now. So what we've got is a custom, a custom background map. And, but then what he's done is he's overlaid several different elements and he's actually using the new dashboard feature, uh, custom map layers. So we've got multiple layers going on here. We've got a density map, uh, a density mark here. We've got polygons around these uh, really uh, high rent areas. And then lastly, we've got these black dots. So there's three layers on this map. So in previous versions of Tableau, this was not possible. It was not possible to do three layers or three axes, if you will, uh, speaking in the old terms. But with the new uh, map layers, you can put on as many layers as you want. Um, I've got a link in the description below that talks about the all of the different custom layers that you can do talks about how you can talks about how you can do it provides an example of uh i think six different map layers on a single map uh which is really really incredible so what's really nice about this is as you kind of start to explore this dashboard really nice tool tips i really like these bars i, I really like the bars that have kind of a, a shaded background uh, but then they have this really solid top of the bar, uh, which is really nice. There's a couple different ways you can do that. Another thing that I like is he's got these, he's broken up this entire Bangalore area into different, the different regions. And as you can see here, they're kind of circles, which again, not sure how you do circle maps, uh, in Tableau, unless this is a, my guess, my assumption is that he has a custom shape on top that ha and that shape has a transparent circle in it and so there's a map back here but then he's overlaid on top of that a trans this image where the circle is transparent that shows the background map uh that's because it is actually a map you can you can hover on it you can it's a tooltip right you get to see a tooltip so that's kind of my way of kind of investigating these things. When I'm trying to reverse engineer or looking to see how somebody built something, it's usually the first thing I'll do is I'll start hovering and I'll start to see if there are tooltips. If there are tooltips, I know that it's a Tableau feature. Then, uh, so again, he's got three of these. I really like the bar charts down here uh, that actually show the different median rents per month. Now, it took a while for me and I'm not sure if 25,000 uh, in this currency is a lot in in my terms um, so I, I would have I would have benefited I think um, to having a you know just a simple ratio uh, con currency conversion uh, and it doesn't even have it wouldn't even have to be you know it could be like in a in a hover pop-up or something like that just to 
you know, maybe converted into, you know, the English pound, the American dollar, and maybe something else just to show, just to kind of keep in mind what that, and keep that in terms of your users. Um, Cause I'm not sure if this is a lot or is it relative or anything like that. You know, down here, this map legend, I think he's done a really good job of kind of showcasing Again, I think this is a custom image because he's got a lot going on here. He's got color of the regions, the size of the dots, and the density. So, you know, obviously to have that many layers going on in your map, you're going to need to figure out how you're going to display that information uh, in a legend. And I think Kisley's done a really nice job of consolidating that information into some into, into a space that is easily to digest and doesn't take up a lot of real estate. And then BHK, one BHK, two BHK, maybe that's, maybe that's bedroom. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but um, cause it's by property type. So maybe that's number of bedrooms perhaps. Uh, I, I looked around, I couldn't find what BHK stood for. Uh, but again, again, uh, something that I can look up uh, afterwards. And then you can see that you've got this percentage, the rent amount and the percent of listings. So there's the majority of listings are in the 10 to 20,000, um, 10 to 20,000 K range, which is what he's highlighted here. So again, really nice. I really like the new, I really like the use of the new custom uh, map layers. Uh, a really nice, really nice vision and tooltips. I really like these, these map callouts right here. So really nicely done. This is again, uh, a very nicely designed, easy to understand, uh, highly consumable dashboard. So nice job. Kisley. All right, data fam. There you have it. That's a wrap. Six excellent visas, six great dashboards. Thank you so much for watching. Congratulations again to Idris to Eve, to Wendy, to Kimley, to Mark, and to Kisley. Excellent job. Congratulations. And until next time, go forth and viz.